Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another HP, a model 428B clip on DC milliamp meter. I got two of them. The difference is, yeah, okay, you can see the color. You can also see the meter here is a little bit more yellow. So you could maybe think this one is older. That is not the case. It's the other way around. So I think this one was on a table more or less in more sunlight. You can also see the sun actually damaged some of the text or this paints maybe a little bit but other than that they are really really in a good good condition i got the meters the main units here without the probe so i've been asking around on the local groups for a probe and finally today it happened this is the real original probe So this is the HP order number for this probe. And this is a rather special connector. Amphenol, it says. Maybe it wasn't that special back in the 60s. Oh, we even got some numbers here. Oh, look at that. 10871. <laughs> So this one is from 71. Isn't that cool? Somebody engraved a date. So when we're talking about dates, maybe we should look a little bit on the back in a second. But first I want you to see the two different models. They got a little bit of differences. We got the, the text on the front. See the red color here, of course, represent the red top of the knob so that's quite easy to to understand how that works right and this is not here on the well yes it is yeah i can't actually see now it's red it has something to do with the coloring and the light so yeah it is red but it's a little bit different font or okay now i know what happened red ink kind of it gets weaker and weaker and like blur out or the color gets faint from UV light. And this again reveals this unit got more UV light from the sun. So this is why this uh, paint is so dim. So this will be the zero of the DC. We're going to go a little bit through the, the different uh, settings and what is going on here. And uh, so this uh, this is the full range uh, current, one milliamp, and all the way to ten amps. Let's look at the back side of the two meters. See this one it says G for Germany, and then six two one. So this is a three digit start of the serial number. So number six means six years after 60. So this is uh, 66. The other meter is a little bit different. See, this serial number is the new kind of style. And this one starts with 11. I don't know if it's possible to get this. So 11 after 60 is 1971. So this one is the newest meter. And also, I, as you can see here, I really like this IEC power uh, connector. This is a lot better compared to having a, uh, a cable. This is just always annoying. So, But other than that, uh, they're very identical. You also got this uh, degauss, where you put in the probe, hit degauss, and then slowly remove your probe in the older version here. Also note this detail about the serial number here. 
it's actually a little bit too wide so they had to fix this in the case so that the serial number could fix that is a little bit oopsie oopsie i guess and here is the fuse outside where here it's the on the new model they are inside well, i'm sorry for all the mess here but i've been busy the last few days i think i'm ready to power this up and see if it is uh, working i am in 300 milliamp range so i better set my power supply let me set it for 200 just so i'm not going to overdrive anything let's plug the mains so this one is a tube based instrument so i expect to see a lot of power usage it was 70 watts 60 50 40 and we see yes and it's back to 60 or 58 watts at the moment Let's see if it reacts to the... Nope. That is not a good sign. Oh, zero was this one. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so if this is zero, and this is 300 milliamps, so when I turn on my power supply, we're going to see 200. Okay. And of course the power supply uh, complaints. Hang on. I can't stand listening to this shit. I we really want to show you guys this detail here. Let me let me crank up the sensitivity of the meter. And now it's not closed. So you put in a, a cotton bud here in the in the meter. So look what happens. Okay, look at that. When I rotate this, can you see? Isn't this just amazing? This is how sensitive it is. And if I hold it like this and rotate it this way around, you don't see any change. And this is because the magnetic field of the Earth is like flat as a pancake when it comes to the radiation pattern. But when I move it this way, see, or that way, see the difference? Isn't that just fantastic? <laughs> so it's measuring the magnetic field of the Earth, and it says that in in the in the manual. In the, you can do this. <laughs> I think it is absolutely amazing. So now I've been through all the different ranges. I didn't want to bore you with all the detail here. But it's about 20% uh, too low uh, on all the ranges uh, on the readout. So I think it is time to open it and uh, see if we can figure out uh, how to calibrate. Maybe I should also test the other unit and see if it's exactly the same before we continue. So of course we're going to take record a video of the other unit being powered up for the first time and that was a lot less power 36 watts hmm but this is also a much newer model and they look very different on the internals i've been looking through the holes in the in the chassis and i can actually see a difference and uh, 
Oopsie doopsie. Here we go. This unit is not working. See, there's something with the zero. So this means uh, this is the rectifier or the synchronous rectification that is not working. Let's try. Let's try and see if there's something going to blow up in a minute. I'm looking at the watts because I see something moving here. Let me give it a half an amp. Yes. Ooh. Is that a stock? Look at that. So there's a meter, a mechanical meter problem. See? It goes stuck there. And let's give it 600. No. 300, 200. Okay. Yes, we got a stock meter problem. Yes. So now I'm in the 3 amp range. And that was 1 amp. So I think we got the delta current is actually okay, but we have a zero problem. And okay, so that is something to fix. And this is the newest model from 71. So I think we should maybe open this one first because there's definitely something that is not working. Now we're inside. And this is the top view. <laughs> I mean, okay, you can see from the top, it's more or less the same case. Yeah, it will fit into the same chassis, I guess, more or less. But from that on, they are night and day. And it's only like, what, five years apart? Or something like that. It's... <sighs> That is a big difference. Yeah, let me let me put them down flat so we can have a better look. That is an amazing difference. Let's just hold the picture here a little bit. Oh, let me be sure that I'm not dropping the phone. So this is the one from 1966. Contains 11 tubes. And obviously, this is why it's using a lot more power. This one is from 1971. Only eight tubes. So of course it consumes a lot less. Also see the, the transformer is actually smaller too. So yeah, I expect this one to be a little less heavy. Oh yeah, the meter is also changed. See that is also a little bit smaller and that pot this another model they change this, this uh, there's a filter see it looks a little bit like the same components more or less <laughs> I mean this is very very interesting to see this big difference but a lot of things actually go again more or less those two capacitors they're the same I also think some of the coils and all that, the, those filter components or oscillator components or whatever it is, uh, they're also the same in this one. They're just in in uh, boxes for better shielding and all that, but they're also uh, mounted on the other side. So let's have a look at the bottom side. Yeah, I know, and those are my usual, usual good and bad stickers. So this one, yeah, is of course working, and I need to fi figure out what is wrong with that one. I, I would really expect this to be different because this is 
<laughs> so much older this design and and whatnot probably been running a lot more hours but no the good old one is working and the much newer one is not working and there's a this layout is just beautiful and also try and imagine the cost optimization one single pcb all the components in bada bing bada bum nothing to do wrong super super easy even connectors for the different pots and stuff see how easy it is just to plug this in and you're done in a super duper snip snap fast right so yeah everything got connectors on here there's also another trick that i i always do with stuff like this that's defect i do the little shake around in all the tube sockets because they get hot and cold and they tend to get loose connections from that and also the other connections and play with the connectors and all that and i do this a few times and then i start to dig into the problem if it's still there so we're going to play with that in a minute and that will be the left no this is the right side view right yeah this is the right side view of both of the units i would call it a bottom view when we have the unit out here on the on the table and we've got two more fuses here it looks like yeah so this is the main entry and then it goes into two fuses for some reason that is a little bit weird why is it made like that and there's another fuse on the other side it's about here and in this unit the older unit we also got one main fuse got a fuse in here and there's another fuse here so they kind of like this design with more fuses for more important stuff and about cost optimization you can really see the difference here right all this is hand soldered okay we got some pcbs this is yeah they are actually with silk screen and tracks and all that stuff and still a lot of components down here between the different tube sockets we still see quite a few components in the older days probably if you find a, a version that is even older than this you're not going to see those pcbs and then all parts they will just be mounted around the tube sockets and stuff like that right and what is that those two inductors we also saw they're here right so they're still using more or less the same important components and that would be the good old light bulb hp loved to use throughout all their products and even the old one here is using some transistors and some diodes and stuff as you can see here i don't know if i got any light on it here right that is a cute one it is really really beautiful i'm trying to see if i can find anything that is brown or a little bit old and crusty but i really can't but again this is also the unit that is indeed working and it is just super super beautiful i've been looking a little bit around for manuals and schematics and of course I can only find the schematic for this model, I think it is. But now I will, of course, I will have to double, double check again. Oh, there's some leakage thing. 
So that is a shield for leakage. The PCB layout is a little bit funny with the way that the tracks go. Look at that. <laughs> it looks a little bit like manual work. Why would you do it like this? Uh, maybe I need more space in the future. I don't know yet. So, okay, let's just do it that way. So, that is kind of how it is. So this layout is, of course, before they started to use CAD. So it's manual work on film. And that is also a very, very good way to do it, but it just looks kind of cool. Duh. Yeah. But now the fun part starts. See if I can find the, the problem. And that will be the two different windings or the different two systems for injecting the AC and detecting the AC. And here, of course, they just used coiled windings for the sensitive stuff. Yeah, that's just how it is. I've been playing a little bit more with this unit. It's actually quite a lot of fun. So what I do is I print out the component placement and the schematic. And thanks to HP Archive for always delivering the different types of service manual with schematics and all that. And for exactly this model, I was also able to find the schematic by writing down the different voltages. Uh, it was quite uh, fast to figure out that this tube is not working. Uh, there was no effect here. And then I realized that, oops, I get some really weird DC voltages. First, I just measured everything here was in DC mode. Ha <laughs> ha that is so stupid. Of course, what you need to do is measure AC because you know you're playing around with capacitors. And those capacitors here, they get old, and especially if they're located close to very hot tubes. <laughs> and it's much more, uh, the, the, the chance is just much higher for the double capacitors to fail. So this is a double capacitor. This is a C62. And this one is the one that is sitting right here. But the other half of it is sitting right here. So when this is not working, all this stuff here is, of course, not working at all. It's working on AC. And then it's generating negative voltages here because it's rectifying AC and just everything is just not working at all. This this tube here is actually working as a diode in a negative way. It's just really funny how this is uh, possible. But that's just the way it is when this one is swinging and the way that the voltage just go this way, right? And then you get a negative. It, it's, it's really funny. So, yeah. Of course, I'm going to see if I can find something else to put in here. Uh, I think it's going to be not that easy. Oh, I wanted to show you guys uh, something that is also quite funny. Um, look at the three pins here. That will be the three CAN pins. And that will be CAN is negative. So they're also connected together, right? So that means it's very, very common to use those connected together pins in capacitors like bridges. So the track from the fuse, you can see the track here goes to that pad. And now this pad is connected via the capacitor to that pad. And then it continues on, right?
So if you put in another capacitor, just a normal, where you put in two normal capacitors, you have to be sure that you connect the two grounds together, right? And then you put in two capacitors to the two positive sides of the two capacitors. That is a classic thing to screw up when you're replacing stuff with, you know, something that is not exactly like this. But by the way, there's a few nanofarads in this one, so it's completely disconnected from uh, from the can. And between those two, I measure a few microfarads, so it's, it's just total meltdown inside this one. And it's disconnected everything to the can, so it's just one big leak inside. But okay, it's also quite old. Well, that's just the way it is. I am back with some new capacitors, or some new, some new old capacitors. Like I said, uh, the ground points of the capacitors are connected together, so when you mount uh, more normal capacitors like I just did here, I'm sorry it's not looking super, super perfect or anything, but I just want to prove a point that this thing is working. I made them quite stable with some really thick copper wire up to the top. And the two blue ones, uh, they're of course in series, so I wanted them to be uh, the same value. And uh, if you look at the schematic, that will be the two that I'm, that's in series. And that one is not so critical. And by the way, uh, according to the manual, the value here is like plus 50% uh, tolerance. So I put in 47 micro uh, on these two. And then I adjusted the voltage here uh, on the on the pot to 272 exactly. And then, look at that. My zero is now zero. And let me show you, this is... 400 milliamps and I didn't touch any trimmers or anything so I mean this unit is spot on when the frequency is accurate isn't that just fantastic so now I can fix the stock meter so there's a mechanical problem in here I need to take out the entire meter and figure out what is causing this uh, stock because as you can see this is 500 600 and so on right Let's go back to foreign. So that's definitely something that is preventing the meter from moving. So let's open. Uh, by the way, here's a really nice detail for you guys to uh, to note if you ever want to um, do service on instruments like this. Of course, it's super easy just to take out the meter and all that. No big deal. But look at the wires. See the, the color codes. And then see what they wrote on the PCB. Number seven is purple. Number three is orange. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like that. It's just so much easier when you do stuff the easy way, right? Or the right way. Lovely guys. So yeah, let's take out the meter and see if we can figure this out. I think I found it. See? The text is actually starting to get loose. And there was actually some invisible pieces of this sticking up. So look at this now. <laughs> See, now it can move and couldn't do that before. So all I did was just blow it away. And now it's moving. So now I can assemble it again. There was some tape around those screws so they didn't come off. And here on the on the back side, I found a sticker, and it says something about 970. So yes, of course the meter here is from 1970, and the entire meter was assembled in 1971. At least the serial number is 1971. So yeah, I think I will assemble everything now and see if. It's super accurate in all the 
different ranges at least. So I am back after the repair of the instrument and now it can of course go all the way. So let's have a look how it goes. To set the zero you go down into the finer ranges and then you play around with the zero. Something like that, right? And then you crank it up to the range you want to play with. So this is one amp. So now I just give it uh, 500 milliamps. And then let's try with six, seven, eight hundred. I mean, look at that, nine hundred. And of course, it is all ranges and all readouts. They are that accurate. And the only thing I poked around with with calibration is. The orange one here is called oh, shit. It's called R69, and that is the meter calibration. I didn't touch any other things in this in this unit. And this is 500 milliamps, but look at that. This is another probe. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got another probe and this is exactly what can happen and the other probe is probably for the other instrument i got remember the other instrument was reading uh 20 too low and this one reads quite a lot i think this is actually also about 20 percent too much on this instrument so i think we found the two probes that matches the two instruments of mine so that is how it works. Now I'm going to go and fetch the other instrument and put the red probe on that one. So let's look. Yeah, we got some. This number here. Yeah. It is another number. 12. I don't know exactly. It looks a little bit different. But yeah, there's definitely a match of the probe and the instrument. So this is what to be careful about. Or is it something to do with how it's closed? I'm still running 500 milliamps and what do you know? Why is it now? Is there... It's much more accurate now. So what happened here? Let's take out the other one. What happened? I don't know. That is weird. I've never seen that happen with the other probe. I will of course have to play a little bit. Nope. It is now perfectly consistent. It has nothing to do with the connector. That is funny. <laughs> I love it when I am lucky <laughs> like that. So the other probe matches this instrument. It is now much more accurate. And I only had to, to uh, touch this trimmer here for the meter just barely. So now it's reading correct. <laughs> and also, I couldn't get this uh, probe into zero. The idea is you um, you turn off the current like that and then you go down into the smaller ranges like this or that and then you dial the zero button to zero and then you go back to the range you want to play with. So let's see, that will be our 500 milliamps. Let's see how it is with 600, 6, 700, and so on. 
I am very, very happy about that. So I couldn't get this probe to zero correctly. And that's because they tend to get magnetic. Um, so there's a degausser on the rear side of the instruments. And I'll show you how this works. So here's the hole for the degausser. You take your probe and stick it in. And with one hand, you push the degaussing switch like this. And then a lot of power goes through this transformer that is located inside here. It is connected to mains power. And the two metal parts, I don't know if I can show you this, the, the two halves of the core go on each side of the probe tip. I actually think it is possible to see that right here. So the idea is you turn this on and hold this while you slowly remove the tip. And then all magnetic uh, errors from this uh, uh, tip here is removed. And now you can zero your meter again. It is that simple. So I think I will call this a wrap up. Two instruments are now fixed and I can remove my red defect stickers and put on green ones. Thank you. Bye bye.